not living bees. But there we go. And I kind of just wanted to add this visual onto, and this is kind of um, just an extension of what Brianna shared. So what this, this map is, on the left side, you have um, population of state prisoners by incarcerated county. And on the right side, you have population of prisoners from their home county. And again, this is state prisoners. So what these colors are is this orange is like around 3,000 to 10,000 individuals that are incarcerated there. This yellow is around um, 1,000 to 3,000. So kind of what the visual here is, is, you know, Philadelphia is down here. It's gray. That means there's no, um, there's no state prisons in Philadelphia. So no, one, no one's being counted from our state prisons in Philadelphia. However, you see this large swath across the center of the state, largely rural. So this is where um, prisoners are going to. And kind of this is just adding on to what Brianna shared. And on this right-hand side, um, the green is like, it's few, few people. So this is where prisoners are coming from. So the green, you see most of the state, there's not many prisoners coming from those areas. And you see the juxtaposition against this, they're going here, there's really no one from those um, areas. So what you have here is in the uh, orange, which again is, this is around, this is Allegheny County where Pittsburgh is. It's about 3,000 individuals that are incarcerated elsewhere that, that are from here. And look at this. This is Philadelphia, bright red. 10,000 plus of our state prisoners are in Philadelphia. So what they're doing, <coughs> right here, that means they're taking them out of our community and they're putting them in here. Mm -hmm. And what this, what this represents is about 30% of our state prisoners are from Philadelphia. And you know, you see it also across the southeast of PA. So again, just highlighting they are, um, our prisoners are mainly from urban areas going to rural areas again. Well, maybe, I, maybe the problem is I'm not going to get the office. Yeah, you can just do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, technology. Um, and again, just adding on to what Brianna said, um, obviously disproportionately black that are incarcerated um, the total population. Um, black, black Pennsylvanians are around 11%, 46% are, are um, 46% of our PA state prison inmates are black. And then over here, um, Philadelphia, you see 30% of our state prisoners are from Philadelphia. Now one might say, oh, well, Philadelphia has a larger population, that makes sense. No, it doesn't, because Philadelphia makes up 20, or takes up, makes up 12% of the total state's population, so it's still disproportionately Philadelphia citizens. So, there is actually an existing statute on Pennsylvania state law, it's Title 25, and this is part of the election code that says, except as otherwise provided in this subsection, no individual who is confined in a penal institution shall be deemed a resident of the election, of the election district where the institution is located. I.e., it is already law in Pennsylvania that prisoners are not allowed to be counted where they are incarcerated. They should be counted where they, they, where they, where they live prior to their incarceration. So this is already law, it's just not being enforced. Now I'm going too far. So actually, um, I think I think Brianna may have mentioned this. There's a momentum going around around the country. Criminal justice reform is a very it's a hot button. So um, and maybe Brianna can correct me if I'm wrong. There are there are about five states that have recently instituted policies whereby prisoners need to be counted in their from their home district and not where they are incarcerated. This is uh, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, Washington, Washington, um, and Texas is on the verge of it also. Okay. Okay. And California. California, okay. So there's this momentum behind states are saying, okay, we can't be doing this, this is unconstitutional. This is violating one person, one vote. So because of that, the Census Bureau is offer offering an option of data product whereby um, they are willing to assist states in moving their prisoners back to where they are from as opposed to where they are incarcerated. What states need to do and what PA needs to do is provide them with a data file that says 
This is prisoners at SCI um, Phoenix slash Greater Park. This is their home address. So PA needs to, um, and this, this needs to be done by the 20, in time for the 2020 census. That's when our next decennial census happens. That is when the redistricting process where they determine our representation is going to happen again. It happens every 10 years. So we need to get on this. Um, and we need our, our, we need our governor, we need our representatives to recognize that this needs to be, that, that they need to be providing this information. So just a question, to be clear, so the Census Bureau has already agreed to do this in, in 2021 if Pennsylvania officially asks them to do it. Yeah, Pennsylvania has to ask for it. And who has to ask? Who? Our, our, our the legislature. Body. The legislature. Are, 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 are they in violation? This is a state law per Title 25. It's a law, correct? Aren't they in violation of this, of this law? So why should there be all of this resubmitting of applications and stuff? And data if they're in violation. Why if, why this yeah, if they're in if they are in violation or hey, speak up just a little title twenty five, then why should there be a resubmission of us providing an application to them if they are in violation of this law? So the question is, um, maybe Brianna could help answer here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna repeat the question. So the question is, is if they're already in violation of the law why does Pennsylvania need to submit this information to get into compliance with the law? So, for the, so the census doesn't have to follow Pennsylvania law. The census is federal. So the census gives whatever the census decides it wants to give to each state. States can then request it and, and have a negotiation with the census about what they're going to get or, and whatnot. And so the census has said to states that want this adjustment, we can provide it to you if you want it. But they're only going to do it if the state says to the census explicitly, we want that. It still negates the law, though. I don't understand. It's against the law. Right, so it's a federal state law. Yeah, let me be clear. It's not against federal law. There was, I think there was some movement. Um, there was some movement in the state legislature to change that law. But I think it was a federal movement. Different mentality. It seems hard. It seems challenging. It seems challenging. It's challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything, everything else, else is a else challenge. Is a challenge. Um, um, so, so I'm ready. For I'm ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was for, built this. for this. I think that, I think that we, all we all have a purpose in life. In life. And mine's going to take, take on a task that, that most that most of back away back from. Away from. That, that impossible. Some people say it's impossible. I see possibilities.